After having finished uh, the entire rigging process, I've written the geometry out um, to disk. So here we have just animtest.bgo, and this contains uh, my entire character. And I handed this off to uh, Warren Letham, who's uh, an animator as part of our character team. And he was kind enough to uh, do a little animation, much better than I could ever do. So if we enter the animate state, we can see our little character who stands up and walks around and uses his turret to find enemies or friends or uh, whatever he wants to look at. If you're interested in finding out more about animation, you can check out Warren's Animation Workshop, uh, which is just in our uh, Learn Tutorials. You can look for the Animation Workshop. This is a re-recording uh, of a workshop that Warren did for the uh, Houdini Hive Horizon event that was held in Toronto a few weeks ago. So we have almost two hours of uh, excellent content from Warren, so I'd recommend checking that out. Earlier I mentioned that this sort of procedural uh, nature of these rigs would allow you to have very different skeletons or very different characters uh, and provide the proper attributes for them and then put them into a Apex Auto Rig component network uh, that would be suitable for all of those characters. So this file, which you can find on the content library, um, I think it's called uh, Character Switch. So just down here at the bottom, we have a, a little note to say watch here. So I've displayed this Apex Scene Animate. And if I enter the animation state, we can see that our character Electra has a full rig um, and she's got a little walk cycle. If I stop that, and if we look at this network, we have a switch here, which is being driven by a switch um, earlier in the network, which I'll show you in a second. But then we have uh, a little addition of Electra. We have a elephant, we have a toucan, we have a capybara. So if we look at this network, and it's got lots of little notes, uh, so it's a very excellent educational resource. So here, all this in the purple network box is our rig. And this rig uh, is looking for and, and finding uh, not just joints, but also uh, parameters, uh, properties and tags and it is using them in different ways depending on what it finds. So it finds a particular set of tags for Electra and it does what it's told with uh, those joints but it might find a different set of tags for the toucan. So here we have this main switch and that switch is determining which of our characters uh, we're going to view. So we could switch from Electra to an elephant. And so you'll see that the elephant has his own geometry and his own skeleton and his own set of tags. And those tags might be very different than they are for Electra, but some of them are going to be very similar. For instance, uh, he has legs and Electra has legs. The elephant has a spine and she has a spine. Uh, in addition to other things. And when we walk through this network, we see that we're still viewing that anime. We're viewing the output of the new character, but with the exact same set of auto rig components. And here we have an elephant with a walk cycle because he's using his own rig. And this switch is also being driven. So it's using this Add character. And similarly, we can switch again to the toucan. So here, a very different character, and yet it's going through the same rig. That rig is using specific properties, specific tags, and now we can have a flapping cycle. So this is part of the, the real amazing and exciting power of Apex. 
not only are we separating uh, the rig logic from the execution of that logic, but we're creating uh, a truly procedural way of rigging a variety of characters. And so you can see the toucan here, he also has a spine. And so when we create an auto rig component that is building a spine, it just needs to have the right inputs, just needs to have the right tags, and it will build a spine. So it doesn't matter if that spine uh, is on a biped character like Electra, a quadruped like the elephant, uh, or whatever these weird in-between creatures are. Uh, they all have spines, and so the auto rig component, in this case a splines component, is providing the functionality of a spine. And you can see that the segments uh, that we mentioned earlier on the multi-IK, um, the segments in this case are spine, trunk, tail, and neck. Well, what's interesting about that is that all three, the, the toucan, electra, and the elephant, all have a spine. So that, that set of joints is being segmented out. Uh, trunk and tail are only uh, applicable to the elephant. So in the case of the toucan and in the case of Electra, they're just ignored. And then the neck, I think we have a, a neck on the toucan. And so these auto rig components can be very versatile. They will look for what they're told to look for, and if they find them, they will operate uh, and do their job. And if they find things that they don't need, well, they'll just ignore them. Or if they don't think, find things that they are told to look for, and they don't exist, again, they'll ignore them. So this is very flexible uh, and very powerful. Uh, so I'd highly recommend uh, going again to the content library and looking for uh, the character switch file, um, which is this right here, and have a look through here. You'll find all of the things that we've talked about uh, and more. And as you can see, it's, it's well commented, an excellent resource uh, for learning more about Apex.